Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to take a first look at the NHL DFS slate for this evening, which is uh, Thursday, November 30th, and it's a big one. It's a big 14-game slate. Um, very, very challenging. Um, so we're going to go over the process, and this is the this is the early look, but it's the same process that I would use if it was 20 minutes to lock. Let's put it that way. So again, that's what we're, I'm trying to accomplish with these videos is, and every one I do, I have this little check checkbox in my head. If, at the end of the video, I didn't teach you guys something like that could help you in the future as well as today. I'm just going to not even up. Um, it's just a waste. Um, it's just going to give you plays. I'm just, I'm just not even uploading. I want to just, again, show you a process to use to uh, to help build lineups, not just today, but so that you don't have to come back and watch these videos every day, honestly. Uh, now, again, it's not completely altruistic. I mean, you are going to need to have the tools available to build lineups. And I think that using the projections from 2DFS and Saberson for um, for lineup building, I think is the good best way to, to, to combine that. But not enough people are doing this. Not enough people are showing actual lineup build. So I'm going to continue to do this. Okay. Um, Boy, this is a monster, but we can take a quick look at the at the totals first. So we have New Jersey with 3.6. Oh, my God, look at this. Boston is at basically two and a half goals implied edge over San Jose. I don't think I've seen that in a long time. So there are four. Toronto is a four. Tampa, 3.7. Florida, 3.9. Detroit, 3.8. Colorado 3-7. So for a huge slate, there aren't that many huge totals, which means there'll probably be a lot of options. So let's take a look. You want to look at the stacks first and then players. No, let's 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 continue to do the process first. So we're going to pull up the true DFS sheets, which have you know industry adjusted weighted projections. And remember, projections in and of themselves are not that I would say not that important. They are important, but hockey is all about correlation and all about getting the guys together that that work well. So, like, if you have two guys that project well and one guy that projects kind of like crap, but the guy that projects like crap is on the same line as the two guys that project well, you may as well just throw them in um, because that's that's what wins, and that's pretty well established that you either want to play five twos, six zeros, or four threes uh, to get – to win these GPPs, but even be competitive in these GPPs. So anyway, um, let's take a look at the sheet. And, and this is what I look at. Every, this is exactly what I do every single day. First thing I do is I look, I take my step back and look at the board. And the first thing I look for is where the cheap values are. Um, and that looks like Nikola Ellers at 4,700 and Sam Bennett at 4,400. There's usually somebody that's above, that's below 5K to rates in the top 10. It's important to get an idea of who that is. So Ellers, 4,700, Bennett, 4,400. Those are probably going to be good one-offs. They'll be good in stacks. They'll be kind of, kind of good everywhere. Next thing I want to look at is, well, if I could find a cheap goalie right off the bat, that'd be great. That rates well. But this early in the day, I don't, oh, you could always play Ilya. Ilya Soroka is always underpriced. And he always makes the rest of your lineups go. So Ely at 7,200 is probably where we're going to start. Then the next thing I look at is just really just see which, whether we got a bunch of guys here from the same teams, from the same lines, that all rate well, or at least two of them, hopefully three of them. So first thing I see, I see Pasternak at like a million dollars, like up at the top, but no one else really rates that highly. So Probably going to fade that. McKinnon, top overall play. But again, there's Ranton in who's really expensive and nobody else probably going to fade that. Toronto. All right. So at least you have two guys that are from the top. So if you want to spend up, I guess they're okay. I have a feeling we're going to try to find something else. And first thing that I do notice is that that Sam Bennett at 4,400? You also have a line mate at Matt Kachuk at 7,200, which rates very, very well. Um, 
So the next thing I want to do is to see if we really want to make Florida work and see if you can find anybody else on either of their lines. And you do have Barkov, who is not on the same even strength line as these guys, but it's on the same power play line. So that's good enough. So it looks as though the Florida power play one is going to be uh, at least – at least by eyeballing it, something you might want to get to. Um, Edmonton, not too much. Yeah, so that's that would be my first impression from looking at this is if is if you want to get a nice affordable stat, I think Florida is probably the way to do it. Um, the other one I want to look at is who's that other cheapo we said? Uh, Ellers. So what other Winnipeg guys are around here? Really nothing. So it looks as though Florida is where we want to start. So the next thing I would do is I would double check the stacks view, which is also on 2DFS. We'll pull this up and see how these guys rate. So we, wow, right off the bat. So we rate these stacks three ways. One is by raw points. We put it over here and you see the Toronto number one, then Colorado, Edmonton, Boston, Florida. Here are the representative players. Here is just point per dollar. And these are usually pretty good to, to make those, you know, three-man stacks as complementary stacks. Um, Anaheim, Buffalo, Nashville, Calgary. So those four. And then you rate them by modified stack, which is a combination of the two. And this is usually the best way to rank them. And you get Florida ranked number one, which is very comforting because uh, it's what we identify just by, by staring at it. Now, again, they're getting it owned, but it's not like their ownership is through the roof here or anything like that. So this is really where I would start is like this exact stack, you know, Bennett, Kachuk, bon Montour, Barkov, Reinhardt. And we'll start with Ilya and see what the lineup like that will look like. Uh, this is the fight odds for MMA. Watch for that video. That's just uploading now, I think. All right. So let's take a look at hockey and let's just build with those guys that we just met so it'd be Barkoff, Bennett, Kachuk, Reinhardt, and Montour, right? All right. And we play Ilya. If we can afford all this, that'd be nice. Uh play Ilya in goal with the convention. Ilya and then we'd have 3,800 a man, right? Not, not not the easiest, but not the hardest. One thing I will tell you is that we could go to that uh, um, yeah, one off from Winnipeg. So the two ways I would do this. One, you could start off the, the with the guy from Winnipeg and then just find good point per dollar, $3,400 guys. Or you could see if you can get those value stacks in. So let's just take a look and see what those look like again. Um, and then we're going to do a Saberson build to see if I'm just completely smoking at something with this whole build. Um, so the first thing I would do is let's take a look and see, first of all, if we just sort by point per dollar, what we're looking at here. Well, you'd be getting a 3K. First of all, who do we need? A defenseman and a utility? Defensemen are always kind of like rough. But you could play McCabe at 3,200. Play Ekblad at 3,200, also from Florida, if you wanted. Um, I think McCabe is probably what I want to do, either McCabe or Spurgeon. Actually, 3,200. Probably want to play McCabe, so put him here. And this is if we were just doing the one-off approach. McCabe. McCabe. And then we find any old thirty-six hundred dollar player who would be. Hold on. Sorry. So if it was just a thirty-six hundred dollar guy, I could get. I mean, it could be anything. Like Reek, something like that. So you could do one-offs there, but you could do a little bit better. You could probably get some correlation if you if you searched. So if we played in Reek as a one-off, I mean, I probably would want to get do a little bit better. And just three one-offs here. But this is this has worked for me in the past. But what I want to do is let's take a look at the uh, the value stacks that I alluded to before, just for the, just for fun. 
that would be Anaheim. Okay, so it'd be Enrique and then one of these other guys. So let's see what those other guys cost. So it'd be either Killorn, Fowler, Macomb, or Terry. Let's see. Um, Terry's too expensive, I think, at 5,300. How about Killorn at 3,800? We could do that. And then we'd actually need a different defender. We could find a good defender for 4,300, if I'm not mistaken. But the thing is, you could play Henrique and Killorn together. And then what are we looking for now? Just a 4,300-hour defender. What's Henrique, by the way? Is he a defender or a – he's a center. So let's go into here. And, again, this is literally what I would do if the slate and fat lock now, which it doesn't, but let's just – What's the, what are the best defensemen nowadays? Uh, Darnell Nurse, 4,700. Noah Haffin at 39. I mean, that looks reasonable enough. So we put him in. And this is fine because now we get a little bit of correlation. We have the five Floridas. We're leaving 400 on the table so we can upgrade our goal if we feel like it. So we can just do that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're now going to go into Saberson and have the, the, an actual professional optimizer uh, build the lineups for us and see if it's different. Now we're going to look at two different things. Uh, we're going to look at it from Saber score perspective and also from a con and we're going to run contest sims. And again, this is what do we do if it was, if it was locking. So it's the same thing. So let's first uh, upload the our custom projections to to the uh, SaberSim interface. And again, if you're a TrueDFS uh, SaberSim subscriber, I think this automatically happens for you. And you also get Goldie's projections, which are basically full industry aggregates. Anyway, um, let's uh, build, what is it, 50 lineups? Make sure it's set on the Sim setting, and then you don't do anything else. Um, And let's see if it's going to take too long. I'll just pause the video. But I, I prefer to do it in real time just so that you guys see exactly how long a process would take. And sometimes, you know, like I said, sometimes it's a little slower. So you have to allot a certain amount of time to build your lineups. And, and you do this enough times, uh, you learn exactly how much time you need. Like, like sometimes you want to keep updating, keep updating, and then build with like you know, six minutes to post time. Maybe for some of you, you can't do it all in six minutes. Some of you, you might be able to. Some people might take a full half hour, depending how adept you are with literally clicking and moving around your technology. And that type of stuff is, you know, is something to be practiced, especially if you're building, you know, big portfolios of lineups. Okay, so what we're doing here is taking a look at just rated by saber score with the min uniques of zero in other words just the top saber score rated lineups for a large slate and i take a look and see what we get so first thing i notice is that uh the aforementioned florida is barely bar barely represented you're getting all kinds of detroit and let's then take a look at the stack exposures. I'd like to double check and make sure I'm getting the type of stacks I want. So this is the first thing I do is I just X out the, the non-traditional uh, stacks, especially on 14 games. Let's only play four threes, five twos, and, and six minutes. So we can X these out. And again, the great thing about Saberson is you don't have to rerun it. I get made a pool of 5,000 lineups and, and it's just, it has plenty of lineups to choose from. If you decide you don't want any three, three twos or three threes. So you keep, keep Xing the stuff out until you get the stack exposures that you want. All right. So now once, once we see the, this type of 
proportions, which is which is reasonable. Now I'm going to go back and see if that changed anything. No, uh, still mostly Detroit, but a bunch of Anaheim too. Now again, what this is, this is the, and there's Nick Eller, as I mentioned before. Um, what this is showing is rated by Sabre score, which is really, really good. You know, it's, um, it takes into account correlation. It takes into account upside, some degree of ownership fade, but we're going to try to do a little better and we're going to use the contest sims. But first things first, we have to decide whether we want to change the min uniques to from min uniques one to min uniques three or two or something. And all this does is spread out your exposure a little bit. So let's, let's do that. We'll change the min uniques three. And the first thing I want to do is save all these to my contest. So you download your template file. And now I know where it is on my computer. It's always on downloads. And I'm just going to save everything to, to here. Boom. Uh, it's got to duplicate one because I only put 50 in. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to hit add contest sim. So what it's going to do is save the contest data of how many players and things like that. So that when I run the contest sims, it's already it's already in there. Um, before I do that, though, let's uh, let's replace my dummy lineups with at least the, the Sabre score lineups I have. I always like to always replace just so I don't end up with dummy lineups and let's make sure that's there. I, now I do this is where I notice stuff like Shane go to spare is uh, uh, go to go to spare the Hera, whatever is um, evaluated. Oh, we'll look at what, you know, this will all be in the projections later anyway, but now let's run the contest sims and see if the exposures look a little, a little different when we compare the lineups to the actual field of lineups that Saber Sim is projecting. And all that that's doing is it's, it, it's creating a field of lineups based on ownership and based on how many entries are playing in this tournament or both these tournaments I identify. And it's taking our 5,000 lineups and it is, you know, trying to put the right lineups in the right contests. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm the first to say. Well, the first to say that this is not perfect, and even people that are creating these sim models know it's not perfect. But it's 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 a good start. So what you do is now you go into this drop down. If you've done the contest sims, this will show up, and you sort by risk adjusted ROI. And I just kind of love to see what happens here. So now when you've adjusted by risk adjusted ROI, now you get all kinds of Philadelphia. You know, and, and we could talk about why that would be. It would be because probably New Jersey's popular and uh, Philadelphia isn't. Okay. Um, you're still getting a bunch of Detroit, though. Now we're getting more Florida. So, unfortunately, now it's just incumbent upon you to decide what you want to do. You know, like, do you want to play, you know, do you want to play the Sabre score lineups? Do you want to play the, the, the contest sim lineups? I, I don't, I honestly don't have the answer. Um, what I will do is, is it, it really, it really does depend. It really does depend today. Uh, I, I, when I go back to those Sabre score lineups with all the Detroit, um, I was surprised I didn't have any Philly. So what I could do is I can always mix and match these and just play less Philly. This way I'll get my Detroit. I'll get my Florida. And one thing you could do is, is you can make a note that in the pool exposure, there's only 9.6% of them. But in these lineup exposure, we're getting 72%. So it's not like throughout the board that Philly is is that great. So let's let's we could do max 30 for Philly. And now we end up with you know a little bit more of a uh of one of these stack exposures. We like that. I mean, uniques, we'd like that. So this is sort of a blend of using the contest sims plus applying what we learned, right, from uh, from our other builds. So let's apply that to the kick save. Boom. And then I don't think I want to change the penalty kill from what I have. So we're only going to, oh, but I already did that, right? So, you know, as long as I did that, I may as well do the contest sim for that penalty kick Detroit and Florida 
and the one off from Ellers, I guess this all makes sense. So let's uh, save that to the penalty kill. And now we will download these and we will be good to go. And we just keep doing that um, right up until lock. And, and honestly, after lock, you're supposed to do this whenever there's more information uh, because you can late swap off of that. Uh, Saberson does allow you to do that. And it, it now factors in your live contest sims. Well, I don't know if it does that for NHL yet, actually. So NHL, you can factor in the results, but you still can do like uh, late swap if, projection, if projections change, which I do recommend you doing. And we'll do, you know, maybe we'll do a, another live video on that one of these days. But that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys learned something. If uh, I think you did, so I am going to upload this and uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.